Hi guys, I thought I'd give you an update on my yoga journey. Um, I'm tired and my body's sore, but I'm having a great time. It's my second month of my yoga teacher training and I told you guys I got all my books and stuff on anatomy. I'm using them. We're learning about anatomy. We're learning about our skeletal structure. I am holding plank and um, all my different positions for so, <laughs> you have no idea. I sweat, we work hard, we have bonded the, all the girls that are doing the course together. There are no men in our course, which is unusual apparently, uh, but it's just been a fabulous journey. And for me, I feel like I'm at the right place at the right time. And it's just fantastic. I feel stronger than I've ever been. Um, I feel like um, I'm learning how to breathe. Uh, I'm busy with learning how to meditate properly. And you know, for people like me, I am super high energy, gregarious, outgoing. For my South African friends that know me and my Canadian girls, my posse on this side, they know I never stop. But you know, yoga helps me to really center, to, med to meditate. I pray better than I've ever prayed because I'm focused. I'm not like, oh yeah. And then the shopping list and then, oh no, come back, come back. Come back. Oh, the shopping list, come back, come back. The squirrel, oh, come back. So um, yoga helps me with that. And my body's feeling excellent. However, I've just had a full weekend of yoga teacher training and Monday I was flattened, guys. And then I went for a walk with my friend Marte, who is not a dawdler. She walks people. It's like speed walking and we did like I don't know almost seven kilometers and I got home and I was like I, I just I can't I drank electrolyte solutions and I was in bed by nine o'clock so um yeah today I'm feeling a lot better I just went for a massage this morning and tomorrow is back to yoga again I try and do yoga twice a week minimum so I do an hours class 9 30 Tuesdays and Thursdays at Priyadi Yoga and um it's my best so I do that and then my teacher training is super intense. Love the stuff that we're covering. Very interesting. We do, we cover a lot about philosophy. Um, and I'm a Christian, so it's very interesting to learn about other religions like Hinduism, um, how yoga came about. Uh, so that's very cool and very, very interesting. And then there's also um, just learning about the different postures and, you know, your core strengthening, how to actually sit. I mean, to your chin needs to be tucked in people when you drive your head put your head against the back of your um, headrest in your car and make sure this chin is your chin is slightly tilted uh, things that you know i need to think about um that really helps with posture and i'm feeling stronger than ever so it's great 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 i'm loving it and i think yeah it's really cool and it's amazing how a lot of the stuff in my life uh things that have happened to me traumatic experiences I feel like I'm at a point where I've been in Canada for two years and three months and I've been able to process so much stuff. And so I can share with you today, I thought I would be vulnerable with you. We're talking about vulnerability in yoga and how important it is. And I'm definitely one of those people that doesn't mind sharing about anything. And I feel like I've come such a long way in the fact that the traumatic experiences I've had in Cape Town, I've had, you know, eight men come into my house at gunpoint. I was eight months pregnant with Georgia and I never ever really got to, I don't think, fully process what happened there. Being being pregnant at eight months, a month later you give birth, you're a mom, you move on, all you're thinking about is breastfeeding, making sure this kid's sleeping and, you know, stuff gets put on the back burner. I had post-traumatic stress about six months later after that, but kind of thought I was okay. We used the word, I'm fine. And um, I never really got to talk about it a lot except to very close people. And even then, I didn't, I guess, want to share it because it makes other people scared. If you're living in South Africa, you don't always want to talk about those things, let alone my kids. So they never knew about it until not long before we actually got to Canada. It's crazy. I kept it from them for so long because I never, ever wanted them to live with my fears. You know, Kevin would go on business trips to Germany or wherever he would go. And I know it was hard for him. He would leave us three girls at home. Burglar bars, beams, dogs. We've got everything. But, you know, if people want to break in, they'll break in. And you guys from South Africa, you know what I'm talking about. And um, I think it was very hard on my husband, on Kev. But I think it was, I know, it was very, very hard on me. And 
physically I became very very ill I struggled terribly with gut issues and stuff and it comes from stress and months and years of stress accumulated affect your cortisol levels you know the story and so for me to be able to release all of that tell my kids what happened tell people in Canada not because I want to be um, a sensationalist but it's been good for me to really share my story even though I'm sure and I know that there are much far worse stories that you have in South Africa and other people that you know but this is my story and I'm claiming it as mine and I'm talking about it because I'm at a place where I'm free and I feel okay to talk about it my kids know about it and um, so it's just a great place I think I'm sharing with you to be and you know I've come through my Madison my little one she was um, my Maddie was really young she was two months when I got divorced and um, that was really tough for me I mean it was a hard hard time in my life to have a two-month-old baby and you're doing this thing on your own and I had incredible support from my family and everything but you know to be able to take on all of these stresses um, and then to eventually learn how to process it and deal with it, I hit a terrible depression. It didn't last for long, but I was in Canada, I was alone, it's winter, it's cold, you don't want to go outside, and you're processing things like, who am I? What is my life? I am 40, I was born in 75, so I'm 43, I'm turning 44 this year, yikes! And it's like, I'm at this junction in my life, and what am I doing? I don't want to work in corporate, what am I going to do? But I think the fact that I started doing something that was for me, like the yoga teacher training, um, I've come to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm doing something for me. I'm feeling great. And I'm able to process a lot of stuff using a lot of yoga techniques like med meditation and just doing exercise. Getting out there is great and meeting people. But I feel like, I feel like finally I can, I feel like Canada's home. I feel so relaxed within myself and I feel truly content and truly happy. And so um, it's just, I just feel very grateful. And every morning I wake up with bags of gratitude and, um, and it's a great place to be. And so I just, I think today, if I can be of any encouragement to you, if you're in South Africa, uh, find people that you can talk to, psychologists, have a go-to person, I always used to say. Um, if you've got those go-to people, talk about it because... I probably should have done it and in hindsight I should have done it a lot more and I never did I always I think there's so much stuff going on crime related things and people are so affected by so many things it's like oh it's just normal and it's not normal guys it's completely not normal and you need to deal with these things because the minute you start to do it the healing begins it's not it's not a healer and it doesn't end there it's just the start so if I can encourage you, if you're in South Africa, talk about the stuff, talk to other people, go and see somebody, talk about it. I, I think I should have done it a long time ago, but in, living here has helped me to process stuff and I'm very blessed that I, you know, I haven't had to work. And so it's allowed me to have a lot of alone time and a lot of caffeine. So uh, a lot of tears and a lot of crying, allowing myself to cry and being kind to myself. Like I'm having a me day. And I am going to be in my pajamas, which is so unlike me. And those days don't happen a lot, but I do allow myself that. Today, I went for a massage. I'm so sore from yoga, and it's a very, very intensive training. Um, I'm not doing any exercise today. I'm not going to do it. My muscles need to rebuild themselves and regenerate. Great. I'm having my cup of rooibos tea here while I chat to you. And those things are important. So if I can encourage you, speak to people. Do it continuously and find time for yourself to exercise and do whatever it is that works for you. It doesn't have to be yoga. Maybe it's your Pilates. Maybe it's kickboxing. Awesome. But do it for you. Because before you know it, you're 44, turning 44 like me, and a whole lot of stuff has happened that you haven't dealt with. Um, I'm just so grateful I am, am where I am, that I've got Kevin as my amazing support and my girls are just amazing and they're flying at the moment they're in an environment where they can fly and um i'll give you the next update on how yoga's going i think my next video should be something about how to do a plank because somebody asked me and said oh i plank and i can do it yeah i can do it for about 10 minutes so uh, you know who you are if you're watching this uh 
if you can do a plank for 10 minutes, bro, you're not doing it right. So, and I'll tell you why, I'll show you in the video, um, and hopefully you guys can practice doing your plank. Get out there, get your butt out there, and do some exercise, people, because really, it's going to lift your spirits. So, uh, I'll catch up with you soon.